list the eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenspaces of matrix A. Determine if matrix A is diagonalizable. If so, find an invertible matrix P and diagonal matrix D such that the inverse of P times matrix A times matrix P equals the diagonal matrix D. So in order to list the eigenvalues, we need to solve the characteristic equation. So we need to find matrix A minus lambda times the three by three identity matrix. So combining up these like terms, when we go across row one, we are left with minus one, minus lambda, zero, one. Going across row two, we're left with three, minus lambda, negative three. And then going across row three, we're left with one, zero, minus one, minus lambda. So now that we have this three by three matrix, we're ready to go ahead and compute the determinant. So I'm going to go ahead and compute the determinant by performing a cofactor expansion across row one. So this is going to be equal to minus one minus lambda multiplied by the two by two determinant of negative lambda, negative three, zero, minus one minus lambda minus zero, and then we'll have plus one multiplied by the two by two determinant of three minus lambda one zero. So computing these two by two determinants, we are left with a minus one minus lambda multiplied by a negative lambda times a minus one minus lambda minus zero. And then this will be plus zero minus a minus lambda. And simplifying this expression, we are left with a minus lambda multiplied by one plus lambda squared plus lambda. So we can now factor that common lambda out to the front. Let's actually pull out a minus lambda, which leaves us with one plus lambda squared minus one. And expanding that binomial, this becomes minus lambda multiplied by one plus two lambda plus lambda squared minus one. So those ones will cancel each other out, leaving us with a minus lambda multiplied by two lambda plus lambda squared. So another common lambda that we can factor out to the front, this becomes minus lambda squared multiplied by two plus lambda. So this is our characteristic polynomial. And when we set this equal to zero, we have our characteristic equation. So applying the zero factor property here, we can see that we have lambda sub one equals lambda sub two equals zero. And then we also have lambda sub three is equal to negative two. So these are the eigenvalues of matrix A. And now that we have these eigenvalues, we are officially ready to find their corresponding eigenspaces. So to find the corresponding eigenspaces for these eigenvalues, we need to find the null space of matrix A minus lambda times the identity matrix for each eigenvalue. So we'll have two cases here. Case one, when lambda equals zero. So when we find matrix A minus zero times the identity matrix, we realize, hey, that's just matrix A. So in order to find the null space, we can now row reduce matrix A augmented with the zero vector to its row reduced echelon four. So taking our first pivot here, we can use this to simplify the first row by doing a scalar multiple of negative one times first row. We can also use this pivot to eliminate the entries below it by doing three times the first row plus the second row and by simply doing the first row plus the third row. So this is leaving us with the equivalent three by three matrix, one, zero, negative one, zero, 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 zero. And would you look at that? We've already attained row reduced echelon form. So this is telling us, or this is equivalent to saying that x sub one is equal to x sub three, 
saying that x sub 2 is a free variable and saying that x sub 3 is a free variable. So we can now use this to write the set of all non-trivial solutions defined by a vector x in R3 where x sub 1 is equal to x sub 3, where x sub 2 is free, so it's just itself, and then x sub 3 is free, so it is also just itself. So notice here how we have two free variables. So we can separate this out into the sum of all scalar multiples of x sub 2 multiplied by the column vector 0, 1, 0, plus all scalar multiples x sub 3 of the vector 1, 0, 1. And this is, of course, such that x sub 2 and x sub 3 are free variables. So using this, we can conclude that the eigenspace, or the basis for the eigenspace when lambda is equal to 0, is the set of all scalar multiples of the vector 0, 1, 0, plus all scalar multiples of the vector 1, 0, 1. So equivalently, we can say that this space is spanned by the set of vectors 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So this is a basis for the eigenspace when lambda equals 0. So we are now ready for case 2 when lambda is equal to negative 2. So the first thing that we need is to find matrix A minus a minus 2 times the identity matrix. And combining those like terms going across row 1, we are left with 1, 0, 1. Going across row 2, we're left with 3, 2, minus 3. And going across row 3, we are left with 1, 0, 1. So now that we have this matrix, we can find the null space of this matrix by row reducing matrix A plus 2 times the identity to row reduced echelon 4. So starting with our first pivot position, we can use this to eliminate the entries below it by doing minus 3 times the first row plus the second row, and by doing a minus the first row plus the third row. So our first row remains as it is, 1, 0, 1. The second row will become 0, 2, minus 6, and the third row becomes all zeros. So last but not least, we can take the second pivot position and use it to simplify the second row by doing a scalar multiple of 1 half times the second row, which leaves us with the simplified row reduced form of our matrix, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, minus 3, 0, 0, 0. So this row reduced echelon form is letting us know here that x sub 1 is equal to minus x sub 3, that x sub 2 is equal to positive 3 times x sub 3, and that x sub 3 is a free variable. So we can say that the set of all non-trivial solutions, vector x is a vector in R3, where x sub 1 is defined as minus x sub 3, where x sub 2 is defined as 3x sub 3, and x sub 3 is free, so it's just itself. So pulling that common scalar multiple of x sub 3 out to the front, we have x sub 3 multiplied by the vector negative 1, 3, 1. And this is, of course, such that x sub 3 is a free variable. So we can conclude that, therefore, a basis for the eigenspace when lambda equals negative 2 is the set of all scalar multiples of the vector negative 1, 3, 1. Or equivalently, we can write this as the span, or say that the space is spanned by the vector negative 1, 3, 1. Beautiful. So at this point, we have everything that we need to determine if matrix A 
is diagonalizable. So in order to determine if matrix A is diagonalizable, let's go ahead and list the eigenvalues and use their corresponding eigenspaces to list the basis vector or the eigenvectors. So for lambda sub 1 equals lambda sub 2 equals 0, we know that this space is spanned by the vectors 0, 1, 0 and 1, 0, 1. So we can say that these eigenvalues correspond to the eigenvectors, vector v sub 1, 0, 1, 0, and vector v sub 2, 1, 0, 1. And for our third eigenvalue, lambda sub 3 equals negative 2, we know that this space is spanned by the vector negative 1, 3, 1. So we can say that the corresponding eigenvector, vector v sub 3, is the vector negative 1, 3, 1. So we can now observe that since matrix A is a 3 by 3 matrix with three linearly independent eigenvectors, matrix A, therefore, is diagonalizable. So using our last theorem, we can now find matrix P, the matrix that diagonalizes matrix A, and the diagonal matrix D, such that the inverse of P times matrix A times matrix P equals matrix D. So we know from our last theorem that the columns of this diagonalizing matrix P are the eigenvectors of matrix A, which we just found. So therefore, we can take matrix P to be the matrix with column vectors, vector V sub 1, vector V sub 2, vector V sub 3, which are the eigenvectors of matrix A. So we have our first column vector, 0, 1, 0, our second column vector, 1, 0, 1, and our third column vector, negative 1, 3, 1. Now, we can even take this one step further and say that since these eigenvectors, the set of vectors v sub 1, vector v sub 2, vector v sub 3, since this set of vectors are linearly independent, we know that by the invertible matrix theorem, the inverse of matrix P exists. And we also know from this same theorem that the diagonal matrix D is going to be the 3 by 3 matrix whose entries along the main diagonal are the eigenvalues of matrix A. And so we can say this is the 3 by 3 matrix, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, minus 2. And there you have it. This is our beautiful final answer. We have the diagonalizing matrix P and the diagonal matrix D, such that the inverse of matrix P times matrix A times matrix P is equal to matrix D. And if we wanted to check our work to make sure that these are, in fact, the correct answers, it's going to be easiest to check the equivalent equation, matrix A times matrix P equals matrix P times matrix D.